Hello and welcome back to another Warlords of Draenor video. So this time we are going to be talking about flying and some very interesting stuff has came out. So first of all, I want to say that this has is something that I have not 100% been able to confirm, but many different people are saying that in an interview with Scott Johnson of The Instance, it's one of the biggest, well, it is the biggest world podcast, that um, basically the Blizzard guy there said that there will be no flying until patch 6.1 of Warlords of Draenor. So because I cannot say for 100% certainty that I've seen this interview, um, I'm just going to say, you know, tentative, but this is an interesting discussion anyway. So, as we all know that, um, well, Blizzard normally restrict flying during the leveling experience of new content. They did this for Wrath of the Lich King, they of course did it for the Burning Crusade because you needed to get to um, max level to get flying, and they also did it for Mists of Pandaria. They didn't do it for Cataclysm, and actually, I think that was a mistake. So we're going, first of all in this video we're just going to talk about the impact of flying on leveling and the world. So first of all, during leveling, what happens when you have a flying mount is that you just have a list of objectives, you fly from X to Y to Z, and you do all your objectives. It doesn't feel like you're part of the world, it feels more like you are completing a task. And yes, quests are tasks, but they don't really feel like a part of the world and a part of the story if you are just jumping from one to the other to the other to the other. It's very important that when you're going around the place on your ground mount, that you know, you feel a sense of place. If you're, say, going through a forest, well, those trees are much bigger than you, you know? The world is something that you're inside, not something that you're just floating above. Because when you're floating above the world, you're not really taking any of it in, you're not experiencing it. You are just, well, you're probably just tabbed on Facebook, waiting until you arrive at your destination. Now that doesn't really make a immersive game that makes people care about the world. So um, yeah, essentially, when you're on, always on your ground mount also, it makes the world more dangerous. Now this makes some, uh, some more just interesting decisions and stuff like that. Because the world's more dangerous, you have to think a lot more about how you travel and uh, the different places you go. It makes getting from place X to place Y for the first time, i.e. when you don't have a flight path to do it, it makes that a little bit of a danger. And I think that adds, uh, I suppose, a little bit of risk into the game. Now, another thing is that they are adding in a, a, a treasure system and an event system, similar to the Time Missiles, but there'll basically be lots of little treasures hidden throughout the world, kind of like cool things you can find. Now, what would happen is that if you had flying mounts, people would just be flying around in circles trying to find treasures. If you're on a ground mount, it certainly feels more like exploring, because if you want to go and um, explore somewhere, you'll need to fight the monsters there, you'll need to make your way through the world and actually experience it. And then also for events, because they show up in the minimap, if it was the kind of thing where you just had a flying mount, then you just go from event to event to event to event, and the game just feels... I think it really breaks down the fact that it's actually a game, it breaks down the fictional world, and it turns it into a bunch of mechanics. So, yes, I do think that for the purpose of leveling, it's a very good idea to have things only be on the ground. Now, let's talk about the scale of the... Oh, and also I should probably say this is a... It's a pretty common game design thing. Players often know what they like, but they don't know what they want. Um, in that, I'd say in Cataclysm, a lot of people were very critical of the Cataclysm, cataclysm leveling experience, saying that the world felt very throwaway and uh, that sort of thing. Now, the reason why I think the world felt throwaway is because, first of all, you just portaled from place to place to place, nowhere really had a, a feel of sense or scope. And uh, because of flying, zones didn't feel big, they didn't really feel... There was no scale to them, there was no scope. And um, I'd say the only place that may have had a little bit more scale and scope was, um, I would say, uh, the, the desert one, Uldum. And the only reason for that is because you could fly up to the um, the cool places up in the sky with uh, Malakir. But even, so, even at that, it wasn't too much. And also, Uldum was just a very big zone anyway. Now, in terms of scale of the world, well, when you're flying everywhere, of course, you're moving at 280% speed, which is fine, but the thing is, it makes the world feel very small. And for your first time through the world, I don't think this is a very good idea. You want it to feel big, exciting, new, you want it to be an adventure, and I don't think it is. Like, there's nothing adventurous when you can just fly up into the sky, see everything around you, and be like, oh, well, that's this entire zone cracked. So, yeah, there's the arguments um, for that. Now... Patch 6.1, what the hell? Uh, this is a bit weird, isn't it? So I've seen this um, supposed interview with Scott Johnson from The Instance, and honestly, everything does seem legit, so I would, hmm, I'm not sure, this is, this is very interesting. Apparently there will be no flying until patch 6.1. Perhaps when we go back to Draenor, we have 
time travel flying, or there's some sort of, I don't know, uh, Draenor's flux capacitors messing up so mounts can't fly, and uh, we only fix that in batch 5 or 6.1. Now this is interesting. What it does do initially is it makes the world feel extremely big, and it definitely, even at max level, makes there be a lot more uh, sort of scale to the world. Now, sorry, I just threw my phone away. It was making beeping noises. They weren't really conducive to a good video. Now, here's the thing, right? Imagine if you are running through dungeons with your friends, or you're going from ra you're doing raids, or you're going around the place. Well, instead of just picking up your flying mount and going there, you'll either have to walk there in the first, or you know, ride there in the first place, or take flight paths. That kind of thing. Now, this is very interesting to me. It definitely makes the world feel bigger. And uh, I can see a bit of a charm to this, actually. Personally, I am all for seeing what it's like at 6.1. And um, that's only a very that's on a very personal level, on a macro sort of level of what's good for the game. Honestly, I don't really know what to say, and I don't think it's something I want to make a decision on. First of all, because um, I'd be completely flamed in my own comment section if I did, and um, second, it's just too hard to know. So anyway, things that it would do. First of all, any um, like world PvP and that sort of thing would actually maybe happen on some servers. A little bit more because you're forced to be on the ground and while Blizzard have said multiple times they don't think uh, South Shore and Tyron Mill will ever happen again there could be a little bit more world PvP now whether that would be conducive to good playing gameplay or not I don't know I don't do world PvP so I can't really say and so there's that and it, may, it means that when you're going around doing whatever the equivalent of dailies are because there are going to be essentially no dailies but there will at least be that kind of, you know, there'll be max level content to fill that void. Going around there and doing that will all, once again, feel larger, bigger scale, that sort of thing, which is, in my opinion, kind of interesting. As for unlocking at 6.1, that would ensure that everyone has had a, definitely, their kind of fair share of the world before they um, have Flying Unleashed. Now, personally, I think that this may be a little bit too much of a heavy hand, and they haven't been afraid to show a heavy hand when they made um, Mythic Mode 20 players only. But, I think it's weird. Honestly, what I think the best option is, is um, you get, I'd say probably, it's, um, you can't f uh, fly until max level, or maybe you can't fly to 6.1, but then they start selling, like, um, the Tomb of Cold Weather Flying, like what they did in Wrath of the Lich King, so that you could let your alts fly, because at the end of the day, sometimes you do want to get through the levels. Now, one thing they did say is that the leveling experience of this is supposed to be a fast and very fun romp through the zones. They've realized that having an ultra grind leveling system just doesn't, it doesn't enthuse players at all, and they'd rather just have a very high quality leveling experience that has a lot more variety and a lot more interesting things, and that while it does have linear quests, it does have some optional things as well. So overall, it seems very good. But, um, yeah, do let me know in the comments what you think about this. I think it's definitely a very ballsy change if it is true, and, um, yeah, I'll see you next time. <laughs>